Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Bobcat Corner, episode number 21. Uh, this is your host, Stephen Vitt, coming back to you guys uh, with another uh, episode here. And if you guys were paying attention last Saturday uh, with the regular season opening game between the Ohio Bobcats and the Syracuse Orange, uh, if you guys caught that game at any point and you watched some of it, you would know uh, what happened there. And obviously, some things were good and some things were, you know, questionable. And overall, it was a 16 point margin at the end of the day. Uh, Bobcats lost 38 22 week one against Syracuse. Um, all things considered, though, it wasn't, you wouldn't consider that a bad loss by any means. It, it's not a bad loss. Um, and honestly, if you uh, take away the score, just by how the teams played, both teams played, uh, it wasn't it wasn't like a dominant performance by Syracuse all the way through. Like I said before, uh, Bobcat Corner Live, uh, the, ver- the very um, beginning of the game was really positive. The first quarter of that game between Ohio and Syracuse, that was really positive. Uh, it went much better than I thought. And the Bobcats were leading six to nothing after one quarter. So even that, you know, you don't record moral victories, but that was a moral victory, if you can consider that to be one. So, yeah, there are some positives to take from that game, but I'm not here to talk about that game. That's in the past already. We just got to put that behind us. Uh, Like uh, Coach Tim Albin, head coach Tim Albin said, and by the way, we'll be linking, uh, I will be linking a, uh, recent uh, press conference interview that Tim Albin did for the Bobcats. Uh, you can check that out in the description box below. It'll be one of those links that I'll provide for you guys. So just check that out when you can. I think that was uh, September 3rd that that press conference that took place. And a very interesting uh, things that uh, Coach Albin said concerning that game against Syracuse. So if you want to listen to that, go ahead and click that link. But uh, yeah, anyway, we're moving forward. We're moving past that game against Syracuse now. That was just game one of 12 for this regular season. We're now going into game two, week two of the regular season for the Bobcats. And this is the this is the main topic of this video here. Um, Our next opponent, the Ohio Bobcats, our next opponent would be none other than the South Alabama Jaguars. The South Alabama Jaguars. Yep, they play in the Sun Belt Conference. And in recent recent history, recent years, they've been doing very well. Very well uh, coached program. Uh, They know their football down there. Although, from what I've been hearing, from what I've been seeing, um, South Alabama, they are in the middle of a uh, retooling kind of period. I wouldn't say rebuild. Because rebuilding is like you're really losing a lot of games or something like that. That's not South Alabama. They're just retooling. They've lost some talent, and they're trying to retool their roster. They're trying to just maintain their status within the Sun Belt Conference as one of the best teams there. Uh, maybe they might be one of the middle of the pack teams in the conference this year for the Sun Belt, but who knows? Um, and I've gathered information about the South Alabama Jaguars. Just uh, some basic info that you guys would want to uh, consider. And South Alabama, they opened their season against North Texas, the Mean Green. And uh, they lost to North Texas by a score of 52-38. So that was like a a shootout, if you will. Uh, Two touchdowns with the margin was there. Now, I have no idea what happened because I wasn't able to see much of any highlights there between North Texas and South Alabama, but I can only imagine that it just got pretty wild. You know, offensive shootout. Very little defense has been played there. And speaking of defense, I just want to get out and say it about South Alabama. I Because I have been reviewing their roster, just checking out what they got <clears throat> on their roster. And South Alabama, I mean, they have like, they have promising talent. They have good talent still on the defensive side of the ball, but this is a question I'm going to have going into this game between the Bobcats and the Jaguars. 
do the South Alabama Jaguars have a good enough defense to make the Bobcats think twice? And I do have a legitimate question about that because if you saw what the Bobcats did in their running game alone against Syracuse, and this is Syracuse you're talking about, an ACC team, I mean, what do you think is going to happen to uh, South Alabama if South Alabama's defense has to put up with that same kind of running attack that the Ohio Bobcats are going to put out? And especially this game, unlike last week, uh, week two, the Bobcats are at home. This game is at Frank Solich Field in Athens, Ohio, so the Bobcats will be the, the hometown team. So... South Alabama has to make the trip up north to Athens, Ohio. They're the visiting team. So you wonder, sometimes it's a factor, but sometimes it's not, uh, the traveling. Just the basic travel that a team has to make from one point, from one place in America to another. So we're going to know right away if South Alabama is going to travel well here because you know their defense has got to get ready for this running attack from Ohio, which I think could be here to stay if that opening game against Syracuse is anything to go by. So just keep that in mind. If if you're really focusing on one key point of this game, it's Ohio's offense versus South Alabama's defense, specifically in the running game. Does South Alabama have a good enough run defense to stop Ohio's running game? I got questions about that, to be honest with you. Because really, if you're going to be in a 52-38 shootout, uh, your defense is not going to last long. I'm just saying. But anyway, speaking of defense, um, we do have uh, some news to report here about the Ohio Bobcats. Uh, at least a couple players that I, that I know of uh, from the information I've gathered. Uh, Jeremiah Wood and Kendall Bannister, at least those two that I know of, uh, I can guarantee you guys right now that they're going to be out. Reports are saying that they're going to be out for quite a while indefinitely. uh, Coach Tim Albin said uh, indefinitely. That could possibly mean the entire year. It's very possible. It's not confirmed, but it's very possible. It's going to be for the entire year, both Jeremiah Wood and Kendall Bannister. So, yeah, those are two uh, considerable um, hits to our defense. That's not something to, uh, that's not something to really, you know, that's not something to celebrate, obviously. So, and also, uh, I do recall a Reese Collier, uh, he got injured during the game against Syracuse. Uh, he's definitely out for now. I do not know the word about him, how long he's going to be out, but I'll keep you posted about that, how Reese Collier is doing. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, so the Bobcats, we did take a couple hits on defense uh, injury-wise. So it's a next man up mentality, as it always is in the game of football. Just keep an eye on that as well, because our depth chart is going to be affected in some way as time goes on here this season. And uh, yeah, also going back to South Alabama, from what I hear, uh, reports are that the Jaguars, they play an up-tempo kind of offense. Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily no huddle offense, but they play at a fast pace. Let's just say, let's just say it that way. They play a very fast style of offense. It's up tempo. They want to keep going. Once they get going, they want to keep going. And it's awful hard to stop if if a team is just really rushing through offense as fast as they can. And that is the case with South Alabama. At least it has been recently. So. Key guys returning for South Alabama, particularly three wide receivers and one tight end, uh, do return to the South Alabama offense from last year. I'm just going to list these guys for the Jaguars here. Uh, just considering what they did against North Texas last week. And I'm just going to just list them off for you guys. Wide receivers. Let's just start there. Jamal Pritchett. 10 receptions, 197 yards, very impressive, one touchdown. Uh, Wide receiver Jeremiah Webb, three receptions, 63 yards. Devin Boyson, five receptions, 60 yards. Shamar Sangren, three receptions, 
37 yards, one touchdown. Uh, Anthony Eager, one reception, 23 yards, one touchdown. And then lastly, got to get to the quarterback because that's obvious. Uh, Gio Lopez, he had a he had 62 uh, yards rushing, which is good because that tells you he's a mobile quarterback who can make plays on the run. But also as a passer, uh, he completed 26 of 49 uh, passes for 432 yards, three touchdowns. And although he got sacked twice, overall he had a good performance. You could say he had a good performance against North Texas. So that's really it for the South Alabama Jaguars, our opponent for uh, this upcoming week, week two, uh, September 7th. Uh, it's going to be a later start time. It's going to be 6 p.m. So as far as the, the live stream goes, I did a recap live stream with the Syracuse game last week. That was like 8 o'clock. I'm bumping that one back to for, for this game against South Alabama, bumping that recap live stream to 9 o'clock. Hopefully uh, that game will be in the process of finishing up by the time I, I go live, but we'll see what happens there. I may even delay it a little bit more considering what happens. So, but yeah, I want to give you guys a scoop about what we're dealing with here in South Alabama. I do think they're a good team. I do think they're a good team, solid. Uh, they definitely have their strong points, their strengths, but they are retooling. I've also heard that they are retooling on on their entire roster. So, yeah, and again, a legitimate question I have is that does South Alabama have a legitimate defense? Because if they don't, then the Bobcats, the Ohio Bobcats, have a chance to really uh, do some damage here, especially in the running running game. And I would suggest, just as an outside observer, I would suggest to use our running backs. We have a deep running back room. Uh, like I said, Anthony Tyus the third, he had an amazing game uh, rushing against Syracuse last week. 203 yards, just amazing. Two touchdowns. I definitely have to keep giving Anthony Tyus the third uh, the ball. But also, you you need to establish Ricky Hunt Jr. You got to get him going too. You got to get him at least around 100 yards rushing somehow, some way in this game against South Alabama. And also utilize other running backs, you know, other guys like Duncan Brune, for example. He's being used on special teams. Maybe use him on offense once in a while. Who knows? But yeah, just um, it's going to be very interesting to see what's going to happen here in this football game between the Ohio Bobcats and the South Alabama Jaguars. Two teams that could be going in somewhat different directions from this point on. And whoever wins this game, it's going to be very good for for the winner of that game. So just keep your eye on, out on this. And hopefully the Bobcats can get this game. This is a very winnable game, in my opinion. I really believe this is a winnable game. Um, and like I said, the mental toughness aspect of this game, you got to be tough. You got to be mentally strong in the game of football. You can't be in fear of anything. You can't be afraid to take some risks here and there. And like I said, I mentioned it in the live stream last Saturday after the game against Syracuse. Once you get down the red zone, you got to find a way to punch it in. You got to find a way to get the ball into the end zone. All things since all things considered, yeah, I understand you want to you know, want to roll out the quarterback and get like uh passing going. I understand that. But you know, in certain cases where if you have a, a solid running game going, you keep going to it. You keep going to it and you keep you keep the opposing defense on their toes and you force them to solve this puzzle, so to speak, of your running game. Otherwise, you can go ahead and just punch it in for a touchdown. At least that's just my opinion. But we'll just see how this plays out. I'm very optimistic about this one. Um, I really believe that the Bobcats are going to get this one. I know what South Alabama presents. Uh, they have a good team, like I said, but I believe Ohio can handle this. This is the first game at home in Athens, Ohio, and I'm really looking forward to this. I hope you guys are too. So with that, I'm just going to uh, just cap this off and just uh, say I hope you guys are having a good day today. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Provide some comments below. 
Uh, if you like what you see here, uh, feel free to like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel, of course, and uh, click the notification bell to get notifications. And just let me know what you guys think. Uh, yeah, so this is Stephen Vitt reporting again, and uh, talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye.